Hey everyone, I thought I'd make a video on how to compute the average when all you're given is a graph of data. So a common question that you might see in the homework is hiding this data right here. The question might say, what's the average number of siblings per student? And if you only have this graph, you could kind of estimate what an answer might be. You could look for the mode and say, well, number of siblings ranges from one to almost eight. So three might be an answer, but we can be more specific than that by looking at the frequency as well as how many siblings each student has. So what I did was I sampled my students a couple of terms ago and I asked them how many students, how many siblings they had. I collected the data and to make this graph, to write this example, I sorted the data and then I made a histogram. So we're just gonna start with the histogram here. So to compute the number of siblings that each student has on average, we're computing an average, so that's X bar. And we know that to compute an average, we're going to add up something and then divide it by a total. So what is the something and what is the total? So let's think about who and what we're studying. We are studying who, the students. And what we're studying is the number of siblings that each student has, so who and what. So we're trying to figure out the average number of students, average number of siblings per student. So we need to find the total number of siblings, total number of siblings. And we're going to divide that by the total number of students, total number of students. Now a common mistake that students make is they think that there are seven students because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars in this histogram. But that's not true because we have four students in this first bar. So I'm reading the graph and I'm estimating from zero to five, this looks to be about four. This next bar, we have a frequency of six, so that's six students. And then if we go through each of these bars, 10, it's about three, three, two, and two, we realize we have far more than seven students. If we add it all up, so I'm gonna start filling out my formula a little bit more, the total number of students is four plus six plus 10 plus three plus three, two, and two. Okay, so um, I'm gonna add that up in just a moment. Now we need to figure out how many siblings there are in all. So we have this label down here on the x-axis. This says the number of siblings. So if we look at the first bar, this is counting up how many students have just one sibling. So there are four students that have one sibling. This next bar represents students with two siblings then we have three siblings, four siblings, five, six, and seven siblings. Oh, there's a cat to visit. <laughs> so when we think about four students having one sibling each, that's a total of four siblings. Then we have six students that have two siblings each. So that's 12 siblings in that group of people. Then we have 10 students with three siblings each. So now we have 30 siblings because 10 times three makes 30. So the total number of siblings is going to be a product of this count multiplied by how many siblings there are. So four times one plus six times two. We're really computing a weighted average here and the weight is based on how much repetition there is in our numbers. So it's kind of like a fast way to do addition is multiplication. I've just organized all of my data. So 10 times three plus three times four plus three times five plus two times six and getting near the end plus two times seven. All right. So to compute this average, I'm going to now multiply all these numbers together and then add them all together. And I ended up, I did this on the side ahead of time and I got 99 siblings in all. And my sample size 
was 30 because there were 30 students. Now I can kind of double check that because this was my original data and you wouldn't have this if this was the question, but to confirm that what we're doing is right, we could look at the rows and say, yeah, there are 30 rows. So we have a sample size of 30 students. And then when I look at my organized data, I can see that a one is repeated four times, a two is repeated six times, a three is repeated 10 times. So these first numbers or coefficients are the weights of the actual number of siblings. All right, so the one last step to compute the average 99 divided by 30 is 3.3. So this, was, this calculation does match my average, which I computed ahead of time. I could have taken up all of the numbers and just added them all up and then divided by 30, but a weighted average is kind of like an organized way of computing that average. And it matches nicely to what we see in this histogram. Now, some places that you might get caught up if you have to estimate these frequencies, do as good a job as you can with them. With here, from zero to five, it's pretty easy to guess that that was four. But if the scale was to 20, you might have to draw some lines and say, okay, that's the halfway mark, that's another halfway mark, and estimate this value a little bit better. And then um, make sure that you've added up all your frequencies correctly to divide by the total number of frequencies so that you can get your average correct. And there you go. This is how we compute an average from data in a histogram.